We're in the midst of Black History Month, which is dedicated to celebrating the achievements and history of people of color. But how much do you really know? While preparing for our next guest, I discovered I knew far less than I originally thought. Jermaine Fowler of the Humanity Archive is on a mission to encourage all of us to get educated about black history, but not just in the month of February. Speaking of which, okay, so Jermaine, I started doing some research and had never really asked the question, where did Black History Month come from? And then I, I know you can talk about this, but um, Harvard trained historian Carter G. Woodson started it. He had the idea, conceived of it in 1925, and then implemented it in 1926 because of the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. But back then, it was, it was something else. It was just a week. It was just a week. It started as a week. And what's interesting is he didn't want this to last forever. He hoped eventually people would automatically recognize contributions to, of black people to history. And throughout the year, so there wouldn't be a designated exactly, month. Exactly. But then in 1976 under President Ford, that, that began. And presidents since then have continued. Why do you think, I mean, today especially, having a Black History Month is important? It's very important for uh, the continued dignity of black people. Um, you know, people still need to see these great examples and have them highlighted because I think in school it's still not highlighted as much as it could be. I was a little embarrassed to have to admit that I knew far less than what I thought I did. I mean, I was a good student. I studied diligently. I had a, a mom who made sure that, you know, those were the kinds of things that were integrated into our childhood. But um, I, I knew far less. And you're actually going to teach us a little bit of uh, black history information coming up. Absolutely. But first, you're involved in something called the Humanity Archive. What is that? Well, the Humanity Archive is a company that I created to tell the stories of history in the most compelling way possible. And I think what makes it unique is my commitment to diversity, to critical dialogue, and to the greater good of humanity. So I infuse that in, in every story that I tell. It's a fascinating website, and it also includes links to your podcast, which you can learn a great deal. I sat there at my desk, just pushed play, and just kept listening one after the other. Where did this desire to encourage people to educate and to seek information, then also to serve, come from for you? Well, when I was a kid, my parents used to call me the professor. I used to walk <laughs> around with my dad's briefcase. So I've always been curious, endlessly curious, and I've always liked to research. Um, so I've always had this. Uh, my background is in business, but this year I decided to lean into what my passion is, and that is history, and you know, see what I can do with it. So here I am. Okay. So speaking of history, let's delve into some Black history that people may or may not know. And I have photos of each one of these individuals. So let's start with Frederick Douglass. Uh, just in a nutshell, who was he, and what's something that people may not know? Well, Frederick Douglass was a former slave turned abolitionist, mm -hmm. and he was a writer and an orator. And something interesting about him is he used to trade bits of bread for reading lessons with some of the young white kids on the playground, because slaves couldn't read back then or learn to read. So he uh, traded bits of bread, so he's a little scholarly renegade, uh, learning how to read, and he went on to become a, a best-selling author. Oh, he certainly did, and I know that that's something you also think of in terms of determination. Now, Harriet Tubman, just in case someone doesn't know who she is, which I didn't need to do the research unnecessarily on her, who was Harriet Tubman? Harriet Tubman, they called her the Black Moses. She freed maybe hundreds of slaves. Mm -hmm. She was a slave herself at one point, and she went back and she got uh, a lot of other uh, enslaved people and brought them to freedom. But, I mean, in addition to the living in the times that she lived in, which, I mean, that's certainly what would seem to be insurmountable barriers, yes. she faced something else. She had something called hypersomnia. And if uh, people don't know what that is, it's you could fall asleep at any time when you're behind the wheel driving or when you're standing. And even in spite of that, her toughness, she was still able to go back and get all those people and do everything that she did. So and I thought that was amazing. We would know that more often is narcolepsy today. Yes, That's something yes. that we, I mean, that is phenomenal. Now, Madam C.J. Walker, I thought that she was the first black millionaire, but you say, and I know we have a photo of her, that that is not true. But let's talk about Madam C.J. Walker for a moment. How did she make her money? Madam C.J. Walker, she actually had moved to Denver um, and she started a hair care product yeah. company and uh, that became one of the biggest ones of her time. She was one of the first African-American millionaires. 
And, uh, you know, we know of her today. I think they're about to come out with a movie about her, actually. But who was actually the first It was Mary Ellen Pleasant. She was another African-American lady who uh, actually traded in stocks, and she had a series of boarding houses, and she was the first African-American millionaire. Well, you sent me down the rabbit hole. I mean, I was telling the Great Day Live crew yesterday when I was doing some of the background research. I mean, her story is fascinating and also a little heartbreaking. I mean, it depends on who you asked at that time, whether she was vilified or had been, I mean, taken for a ride, because while she didn't die penniless, ultimately her majority of her wealth was taken from her. And I, I'll leave it at that, because I think our viewers should delve into her history. It Absolutely. was fascinating. And then last but most definitely not least in bringing this close to home, Stephen Bishop. Stephen Bishop, he was, uh Kentucky man. He was uh, born enslaved in Kentucky, and he actually was the first person to map Mammoth Cave. So we went down there with only a rope and a lantern down into the dark caverns. I can't imagine the bravery that he would have had to have to do that. I mean, we can thank him for mapping that out for all Absolutely. of us. It wouldn't be what it is today without him. And I, I just, I really I appreciate you taking the time and can't encourage people more to check out your website. I appreciate it. Jermaine Fowler, again, is on a mission to encourage people to seek, educate, and serve. You can connect with him by visiting thehumanityarchive.com. You can listen to his podcast there, too. We're coming right back.